Here's Papa. Hello, 45 Alpha Charlie Papa Channel, and today we are at the Old Gunsmiths. Yes, we're getting an Old Gunsmith sighting today. Um, I brought with me my Mossberg 500. Now, I picked this up back in January before uh, the world went crazy. Um, at a gun show, picked it up for 150 bucks. Um, operating Mossberg shotgun, just real basic. Figured I'd uh, maybe take this and change it into uh, like a trench gun or a riot gun or something like that. Um, just thought it'd be a good project. Now for me, the length of pull on this is just a little bit long. I'm really having to kind of reach for that trigger. So today we're gonna to take off just a little bit off the butt stock, bring that length of pull a little bit shorter, make it a little bit more comfortable for me uh, to shoot. Uh, and then, you know, eventually we're probably gonna go through and, and refinish the stock. Uh, we might uh, go ahead and shorten this barrel. I don't know if I'm gonna shorten this one or go buy another one. The beauty with this is, you know, these Mossberg 500s are really good, robust, uh, quality shotguns. They've got a reputation of being, you know, reliable and, and robust, and the parts are available. So, you know, if I nick something up or mess something up or don't like what I've done, uh, there's plenty of aftermarket parts and parts from Mossberg to uh, fix this and, and change it. But uh, I figured I wanted to keep the wood. Want to keep the classic wood um, i figure this be a great opportunity for us to shorten the length of pull on this kind of show you how how that gets done but uh let's take a look at the inside of the shotgun because yeah i got it at a great price but the outside it looked fine but when i got in it um it was dirty it was a typical farm gun so let's take a look at that real quick and then we'll go to the old singing gunsmith shop and start work on this beauty all right, I thought I'd give you a really quick glimpse here of what this shotgun looked like on the inside when I got it. It was really dirty. That waxy buildup you see in there is years of being squirted down with WD-40. We'll get into that a little bit when we get over to the Singing Gunsmith shop, which is, I know, exactly what you're waiting for anyway. Twenty-five, twenty. Hello, singing old gunsmith. How are hey, you doing today? How you doing, guy? Oh, good. Hey, I brought my uh, Mossberg in here. Hey, you're that famous guy. Yeah, yeah. The one from the, one, the, yeah. the yeah. yeah. Gets like a Charlie Papa. Yeah, yeah. I know you. You're the one that gets 125 views of video or something like that. 125 years of video. Views. 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 125 total. Yeah. Five like million. Yeah. What you got today? Anyway, I've got a, a Mossberg 500 here that's. Uh, Length the pull is a little bit long for me, and I thought we'd uh, get taller. Yeah, we thought we'd uh, try to shorten it up just a little bit. Oh, we can do that. We can do that. Oh, it's a, a good old uh, Mossberg 500. Oh my goodness, this yeah. is a uh, uh, ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Yeah. Ubiquitous. That's that's a fancy term for it. lots of them around. Lots of them around. Yeah. Yes. And you want to shorten this? Yes. Alrighty. Do you know how uh, long it is now and where you want to uh, go with that it? That I don't. Okay, let's. I put... just know it's probably about a half inch or three quarter inches too long. Okay. For me. And you want to use the same recoil pad, or you want yes, to buy a good one? Oh, I'm sorry. You want to reuse the same recoil pad? Oh, we're being cheap today. Yes. So let me put this together so I don't. I lose figured the, the process would be the same whether we put a good new one on there or you know. You thought that, did one. you? Yeah. You thought Unless you happen to have a nice one in stock, that you thought you I was going to give you one. Solid. Is that it? Yeah. I see. Well, that's that's a good thought. Uh, if I did that with all my customers, I'd uh, last in business about mm, till yesterday. Till yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I go out of business yesterday. yesterday sometime. Yeah, yeah, sometime yesterday. Yes. Okay, just give me a second here. Up. Oh. Shh. Get this old Stevens 44 back together. Uh, this is one of my one of my real big deals on the uh, auction site. 2520 SS single shot, not 2520 Winchester centerfire that you can actually get, <laughs> but an obsolete cartridge that you absolutely oh, cannot lovely. get. Anyway, let's put that aside here someplace. We will knock it over later. Let's see what we got here. All righty. The infamous old 500, huh? Well, okay. The first thing we'll have to do here is probably pull the buttstock off. I'm glad to see that uh, 
the action is open and the uh, gun is empty. I feel real bad if it wasn't. And we may have to relocate this, which will leave a hole in your stock. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Uh, now that we're not, uh, not we're taking like off. a half inch or so off, so I think we might be all right. Now, I don't know the the way of measuring length of pull and drop and all that other good stuff. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Are they holding the screen door on with that thing? Um, I need a. Uh, a ruler. Queen Elizabeth would do. She's a ruler. You know Queen Elizabeth? Yes, I've heard uh, of her. Oh, you don't know her then? No. You haven't actually met her? No. Born in her country, but don't know her. You were born in England? Yeah. What the hell would you do that? <laughs> All right, generally, the uh, length of pull is me measured from the middle of the trigger to the middle of the butt collector. Okay. Uh, generally, uh, to measure the length of pull, you go from the middle of the trigger to the middle of the uh, recoil pad. Now, this was a tool that Brownells used to sell and uh, to one of the gunsmithing schools. I think with the gunsmithing school quit selling it, so now uh, they don't sell it anymore either. But I still have one laying around, but you don't need anything that fancy anyway. A regular old tape measure, yardstick, whatever you happen to have around. So if we go from the center of the butt to the trigger, we can see that this one has, <clears throat> I don't know if you can get that angle, a 14 inch length of pull. Can you see how the center of the trigger lines up with the uh, 14 inches? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the, we have a 14 inch length of pull. We know that for starters. That's with the recoil pad on. So if we want to shorten that to say 13 and a half, we're going to want to take a half inch off of the butt plate here, or off the butt. We'll pull the recoil pad off, we'll take a half inch off the butt, and then we'll have to refit the pad. Okay, so the first thing to do will be to get the butt off the shotgun. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to pull the butt stock off, and that should just be two wood screws. Even I can do two wood screws. Now, see, a real professional job wouldn't have had these holes in them. You put little slits in them, use a round-bitted uh, screwdriver, and you unscrew them, and the bits and the slits that you put in there will heal up, and you won't even tell that there was ever a hole in there. But somebody has already been in here and done probably the factory. Probably the factory. <laughs> yeah. And decided that that just wasn't It is really a Mossberg. It wasn't really important. To, they're not built to be pretty, they're built to be useful. Yeah, well, uh, the one thing I will <laughs> say about these, you know, they uh, they do uh, sell a lot of them because of the price, and they are a reasonable shotgun. They seem to hold up well for the people that have them. Um, you know, they're, they're not the prettiest thing or the most expensive thing, but they're a, uh, it's like a Chevy, you know. It's not a Cadillac, or it's not a whatever. So, okay, when you get the... Uh, recoil pad off, what you'll find is you have a through hole in the stock that leads up to a bolt or a screw that holds it to the receiver. And to get at that, we will require a long screwdriver. And we need to find out where that slot is and get the screwdriver in the slot rather than next to it because if we get next to it we could actually crack the stock. Wildcat Kelly was looking mighty pale standing at the sheriff's side and the sheriff said Wildcat I'm sending you to jail. Wildcat hung his head and cried oh give me land lots of land under starry skies above don't fence me in let me ride through the wide open country that I love. Don't fence me in. By the way, there's a five dollar minimum. Five dollar minimum for the floor. Yeah, for the floor show. Okay. 
That'll be tacked on to the end of the bill, right? Oh, sure. By the way, there's a rubber pad on the floor that the uh, muzzle is resting on. I uh, don't just have it on the uh, floor. There's a rubber pad down there for it. Just, oops, this contingency. Okay. Now, there's your stock bolt, your through bolt. Mossberg, back when this was first developed, I think about 1955 or so, when the 500 was first brought out, was very innovative. Before this, all of the shotguns, the 870, the Ithaca 37, uh, you know, mo most of the big name shotguns, pump shotguns, the bolt here has a locking lug on the top. And when you pulled them forward, they locked into the frame, right into this, into the receiver. There's a notch in the receiver that the locking lug goes into. Mossberg thought, you know, we could make the gun cheaper, less expensive, I should say, rather than cheaper, if we did a receiver that was not milled out of a billet of steel. We'll do it out of a billet of an alloy, aluminum for better uh uh, for lack of a better term, but I'm sure it's not just soft aluminum. It's not what you get tin cans out of, or aluminum cans out of. And so they made it with a barrel extension that the bolt locks into the back of the barrel. That puts no pressure on the uh, receiver itself so that they could make it out of a softer alloy and not have it stretch. Brilliant, brilliant. Then a few years ago, when Benelli came out with a, um, a polymer receiver, they were advertising about how they were so innovative. Yes, the, they were locking the, the bolt into the barrel extension so that they could use a plastic receiver. A polymer receiver, sorry. And I, when I first saw that, I thought, yeah, boy, that was really innovative. Back in 1955 when Mossberg did it. Okay, so to shorten this a half inch, we obviously have to shorten it a half inch. Now, there's a couple of things we want to do, okay? First of all, we don't want to change this angle, okay? If that angle is 90 degrees, we want to keep it at 90 degrees. Get over here. Okay, and as you see, that is pretty close to 90 degrees, but it's not quite. It's a little different. So if we want to keep, we can, we can raise or lower the um, pattern by adjusting that angle. So that when you bring it up to your shoulder, if I cut it this way, it'll be pointing down. If I cut it this way, when it hits your shoulder, it'll be pointing higher. So I can adjust your pattern a little bit high and low just by changing this angle slightly. Interesting. So, just just something bit, I never thought of. You know, just a little bit of, of, of gunsmithing uh, knowledge, uh, just so it, uh, uh, you feel like you got your money's worth. Okay? So, now what we need to do is we need to mark this. You said you wanted to take a half inch off of it. You don't have to do I'm, this my way. There's lots of ways you can do this. But I would take and take a compass from a drawing set and I would measure a half an inch. Okay. And then if I take it, I can mark it on the stock exactly where I want to cut to take a half inch off. That's a half inch, if you can see that line. Yeah, so now when I put it into the saw, I know where to line it up. Okay. Now, it gets a little not too bad. Now, of course, you have the part where you actually cut. And uh, you want to make sure that, you know, what they say is measure twice, cut once. Because you can cut this three, four times and it'll still be too short. I guarantee it. If it's short the first time, it'll be short every time you cut it. With a half inch over here, and this is the guideline stuff back up so it's out of the way. 
bring my saw over here. Now you could probably use a power saw on this, but well, this is going to give you a little bit more finite control. You could, you could use a power saw. I mean, that's uh, what I want to do is I want to set my angle to match what is already there so that we don't change the angle since you haven't said that you want to uh, uh, make it shoot higher or lower. No, it seemed to be shooting just fine. So. Okay, so we'll leave it right where the factory had it, but with this I can adjust it either way. And since I don't shoot, you know, skeet competitively, you don't. Uh, it does it does what I need it to do. Well, that's <laughs> what well, if you shot skeet competitively, you wouldn't be caught dead with a Mossberg fire. Uh, I know, but all the boys would make fun of you. <laughs> What's the matter? Too cheap? Wife won't let you buy a real gun? <laughs> but, but there's always that satisfaction if you beat them with it. Well, I don't know how many skeet uh, tournaments you've been to, but unless you can shoot 100 straight, don't even think about beating anybody. <laughs> now, my concern is uh, when you come through and you start getting chips on the back end. Okay? So what I'm going to do... And this is no guarantee I won't get chips on the back end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and drop the other roll of tape on the floor. Now that I've accomplished that, we're going to, I'm going to put some uh, tape on the back end. And I don't know that that's going to really keep it from breaking through. But once you get halfway, I hate to turn them around, but I probably will. Okay, so I'm going to put this on here just just to be a little persnickety. So now we can go and simply cut the stock. Line it up. And yes, there are other ways of doing this. Power saws and all that other stuff. Um, I don't like having the dust in my shop, so this keeps the dust kind of localized. I could put a uh, vacuum cleaner up here and suck all that dust up. But you'll notice I am doing this left-handed just to show you how good I am. <laughs> you know what, a nice fine tooth saw to give you a nice fine cut without big chips. I mean, chips was a fine uh, television program, but you really don't want them in your uh, stack. <laughs> you bored yet? <laughs> <laughs> Not when I run this at four times speed. Oh, okay. <laughs> It'll look like it's a power machine. <laughs> <laughs> I look like uh, uh, Pacquiao or, or Lomachenko or one of those yeah. super fast boxers with my hands moving at light speed. Okay, honestly, what I'm worried about here is I really don't want chips on the back side. And whether or not I would get those in this wood with this saw, I don't know. So, what I may want to do is turn it over. The problem with turning it over is with the saw lines to meet. <laughs> Perfectly. And besides which, I'll have to go after the other side. In order to keep it, then I'll have to change the angle. Maybe that's not worth the effort. We're going to just... Really well, I do plan on possibly refinishing this. Um, I'm thinking about uh, turning this into a trench gun. Shortening the barrel. And For what purpose? For fun. No, I'm just curious because, you know, it was, if you cut off the barrel... You either have a cylinder bore, or you have uh, have to put choke tubes. Yeah, in it. we uh, we have home defense. Yeah. For home defense. Home defense riot gun, um, and it's the beauty of the, the shotgun. I can buy a longer barrel. The longer barrels are cheaper than buying a shorter barrel. Everybody wants a wants short a barrel. Short barrel. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, everyone wants a, wants a short barrel until you go to buy one. Yeah. That's how it usually works for me. <laughs> you know, they're, 
Nobody can give them away until I want one. Then all of a sudden they become popular. It's like a 16 gauge shotgun. You go to buy a 16 gauge shotgun, the dealer will tell you, you know, they're really scarce. They didn't make any anywhere near as many 16s. Worth a lot more money than the 12. Until you go and sell it. Then nobody wants a 16 gauge. Jeez, they <laughs> can't offer you what the same as I offer you for a 12 gauge. You know, if it was a 12, I'd give you 50 bucks more, 100 bucks more. But 16 gauge are going to sit here forever. Nobody wants them. Until somebody does, and then it's rare. It's rare. You know, this is where it works up a sweat. Yeah. Oops. There's uh, nobody else in the shop buying anything. <laughs> it's weekend. Oh, I think we did okay. I think we're going to be okay. That's a busy time. I think we're going to be... Oh, look at that. Look at that back. No chips. Huh? Yeah. Oh, I like that. Ta -da! You know... That's almost like a professional would have done it. And what I just want to do is I just want to clean this up a little bit so the recall pad sits on there absolutely flat. You know, there's no dips or dipsy doodles or any of that stuff on there. But I always try and use a backer when I sand. Uh, it, it keeps me from rounding the edges. Don't want, don't want no round edges. And that came out so nice and smooth, it really doesn't take too much work, but nonetheless. Now comes the bitter bit. Now we need to remount this. You know, the, the beauty of a wood stock, you can do something like this. Well... I don't know. I was I was out of uh, the country for Woodstock. I missed the uh, oh, okay, I missed yeah. Woodstock. So. You know, you, you try to do Sam this to a polymer other, stock. Um, my uncle Sam had other things for me to do rather than go to a rock concerts. Uh, do you want that black uh, spacer left in there? I don't think we're going to be. We can't save it. Is the problem when you line up the screw holes? Mm -hmm. Your toe. Is already into the hole here. Okay. So I think I'm going to install this without the spacer. Without the spacer, which means we're going to be a sixteenth of an inch off. <laughs> Ooh. We're off the half have inch. The same issue with the uh, hmm? pad too. No, well, the, the, no, the pads are going to be oversized. They should be oversized since we did Maybe have the smaller. taper, and we'll have to. I want to put it on, and I want to then mark it and regrind it. Okay, but um, the only problem with that is that um, that puts the uh, finish in danger. Putting on a pad without ruining the finish is kind of a, is one of those touchy touchies. Uh, but what I think I want to do is I want to drill pilot holes. Because otherwise I'm afraid I'll split the stock when I, uh, because we took a half inch of depth of that screw out. I'll put those wood screws in and they'll start wedging into the stock without uh, any relief and you can you can split ah. the stock that way. If you understand they'll start I'm... yes, they'll start digging into new wood and mm -hmm. if you understand what I'm trying to say. But yeah, they'll 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 have these wedges going into that wood. And I don't think this most likely what'll happen is a screw head will strip out before the uh, stock splits. Because being beach is a really hard wood. But walnut, I've seen them split. Not that I've ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heaven forbid I would ever do that.
sounded a little hard. It's it's pretty hard stock. Uh, it ain't metal, but it's as I said, that was just just so the point of that thing is got a pilot and doesn't uh, split, split the stock going in. So now comes the bitter bit. You don't even have matching screws. Do you realize that those are not matching screws? Well, let's fix it. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old farm gun. Yeah, I the, guess the is. amount of uh, corn stover that I pulled out of that thing and the amount of uh, WD 40 wax that uh, was gumming up. <laughs> oh, no, not WD 40. You never use WD 40 on your guns. <laughs> it was. It was one of those, if it stopped working, we just squirted it down with WD-40 yeah, and of, she was good to go. Lots of people do that. It's kind of ugly, but lots of people do that. See, there's a, that's not a normal recoil pad screw. That's something else. There we go. I'm sure old farmer John just went out to the, uh, oh, I the, know uh, the machine shed and, so, you know, yeah. dug through his coffee yeah. pockets worth of screws and said, yep, that I, one looks close. I got one of those myself. I, I've been, uh, I, I wouldn't say I'm a farmer, but uh, I own a tractor, so yeah, I got, <laughs> I got tractor stuff. Now I got uh, one slotted and one uh, uh, Phillips. I'm looking for two of the same kind, it would be nice. When you go to pull it out, you just want to have one kind of screwdriver rather than two. I can't, yeah. <laughs> There, the industry is going from slotted screws to all you can buy in the hardware stores these days are uh, Phillips screws. And uh, so I hoard my uh, slotted screws for, re, um, for guns that I'm uh, refurbishing, old guns that I'm refurbishing. That way, draw, we uh, have slotted screws and Guns that should have soft slotted screws. So as I get uh, slotted screws, I kind of save them you know, aside from everything else. Mm -hmm. Just turn me loose. Let me straddle my old saddle underneath the western sky. On my kites, let me wander over yonder till I see the mountains rise. I want to ride to the ridge where the west commences and gaze at the moon until I lose my senses. Can't look at hobbles and I can't stand fences. Don't fence me in. Send me off forever, but I ask you, please, don't fence me in. All right. Um, you said you were going to probably someday uh, refinish the stock, huh? Mm-hmm. Well, it's probably going to be necessary because through no fault of yours or mine, the stock got a little wider up near the, uh, as it yeah. went forward, instead of uh, being the same which, diameter. Which tells me they fit the... Uh recoil pad at the end of the mm -hmm. stock instead of doing the whole stock yeah well yeah they didn't have fine they, 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 somebody was sanding on the recoil pad and right in front of the recoil pad instead of the whole stock so what they did was they narrowed the back of the stock right in front of the recoil pad and further up the stock isn't as narrow so, so what we yeah, have do, do, yeah. is all this proud wood. Now you have two choices. Here I can grind the the uh, recoil pad to fit. That's that's not a big deal. But here, that's ugly. That's ugly. So you have two choices. You can decide that refinishing your stock is really a good idea. See, it wasn't even on straight. It's using the same holes that were there. It's Proud on this side and not proud on this side. We're not as proud. Um, so you got two choices. You can either refinish the stock as you were planning on doing anyway, 
Or you can spring for a new recoil pad. I think we're going to spring for a new recoil pad. Oh, no. Maybe. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.